So to understand promises, I've got a quick example on the screen. Well, to understand and compare and contrast promises and, and callback, I've got an example I'm going to go through on the screen. So we have a function which we call on ready. Inside this function, I'm using the built-in set timeout function. And what this function does is after 200 milliseconds, it calls this function. Okay, that's all this does. So after two seconds, it's going to print ready to work on the screen. And then I'm just calling on ready. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to simulate perhaps like a, a network request. So you would call on ready. It would return straight away. In fact, to simulate that, called okay so we would call on ready it would return straight away and print out on ready called then after two seconds it would print out ready to work so perhaps this is the same as the save function so the save function would just initiate just kick something off we would go to the next line and only after a period of time has passed will some other will the response be received from the network and we perform some other other processing okay so let's so let me refresh the page and then let's run this one two ready to work so the key thing that we're trying to solve with what we're doing is is how do we execute some code here you know, after we know that perhaps that we're ready to execute some extra code that perhaps the network response has returned from the server or the long-running job that we're trying to process has completed we, we want to only run some code after that event has completed there. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. The first way we tried to solve it was essentially equivalent to passing in a function. So we pass in a function to on ready. CB is a function, not a, a value, not a number, but a function. And you can do that. We've been doing it all the way through with JavaScript and you can just pass as a parameter to a function, a function. So I can pass as a parameter to the on ready function, another function. And perhaps this function is just log something out. It says uh, doing work dot dot dot. So now I'm passing to the on ready function this function as the CB parameter. And so we want to call this function after the ready to work log line has been printed. Now, how do you call a function in JavaScript? Simple. You just call it with brackets, open and closing brackets. That's how you call a function in JavaScript. So on line five, we are going to call this function here. That's a callback. We are going to execute some other code and when we're ready, we are going to call you back. We're going to call back the calling function with whatever function it provided. Okay, so let's refresh the page to make sure this works. Clear, then run. On ready called, ready to work. As soon as ready to work got printed out, we called callback. Callback is this function here, and then we printed doing work. So under the hood, this is really how callbacks are working in the past server code. It's quite simple, really. I mean, the callbacks are something that you'd use all, all over the place in JavaScript with, a, with any kind of asynchronous programming. But there's another solution, and that solution is to use something called promises. So promises are a concept. There are many different implementations of promises, as in many different library implementations of promises. The one that parse has its own one called parse promise, but essentially all of them really use the same mechanism and have the same terminology and the same functions. So what I'm about to teach you is pretty much applicable for any promise package that you'll use in JavaScript at least. So what you do is you create a promise Okay, so you do var promise or whatever you want to call it, new parse dot promise. So we've now created a promise. And then what we do, the last part of the function is that we return that promise. Okay, so at the start of our function, we create a promise. And at the end of the function, we return a promise. So let me get rid of this callback here. So now the on ready function here, when we call it, we get returned a promise. And a promise object has a function. So we, we can probably code it like this. So now we've created a promise at the top of the function. We've returned the promise at the bottom of the onReady function. So when we call onReady, 
as well as kicking off this set timeout, it's also returned a promise. Okay. Now promises have various functions that you can call. One of the functions you can call is called then. So you can do promise.then and you can pass in a function and then in this function let's just add that log line back in. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're then saying call the on ready. The on ready returns a promise. We then call a function on the promise called then and we pass that. Well essentially it is similar to a callback function but just written a little bit differently. So we pass it a function. And what this is saying is when this promise is resolved or completes, then call this function. Okay, so when on ready completes, then call this function. How do we tell the promise that the on ready function has completed? How do we tell it to call the then function? How do we tell it to do that? We do that by calling promise dot resolve. So instead of where you would normally call the callback here, you type promise dot resolve. Okay, so let's refresh the page and just make sure this is working. Run. On ready called one, two, ready to work, and then doing work. So let's go through this line by line. So we call on ready, on ready, creates a promise kicks off a timeout, just starts it, doesn't wait for it to end, just starts a timer, and then returns a promise, this promise here. In our code, we then say, when on ready completes, when the promise is resolved, then call this function. And then at some point in the callback, in the set timeout callback, which perhaps is equivalent to a, a network request, so when we get the data back from the network, we call promise.resolve. We're then saying, hey, look, We've got the data, everything's returned. Now call the then function, and that's what's going on. So then when the resolve gets called here, this function gets triggered, okay? So that's how promises work, and they're just a different way of working other than callbacks. Now because on ready returns a promise, we can actually short circuit all of this. This, this is what people normally do, is they short circuit this, they do on ready, Dot then because on ready already returns the promise we don't, we don't need to store it as a variable we we'll just do on ready then so it kind of sounds like English right it sounds like when on ready completes then do this it's kind of more natural sounding code okay so that's how you handle when things work correctly what about when things don't work correctly okay so you can pass a second parameter to then a second function which gets called when things go wrong. Okay. And this might also get passed an error message. So we can just log the error message. Okay, so how do we work with promises so that the error function gets called and not the success function? Okay. So when you call resolve, it calls the success function. When you call reject, it calls the error function in the then. So now, if we click clear, hit run. So you see here, it's printing undefined because actually there's no error object getting returned. How do we actually return some sort of message for the error? Now we do that by passing something to the reject. So we can do... Um, something went wrong. So now when reject gets called, it will call the error function. If there is one, you don't have to provide one. If there is one on the then, it'll call the error function. And it'll pass the, as the first parameter, whatever you passed in to the first parameter to the reject. So if I now clear this and hit run, there you go, something went wrong. So another cool feature about promises is that you can chain them. That's to say that you can put in sequence a number of promises, all connected with the then function. So let's actually get rid of the error for now, just to make this simpler. So we can actually say on ready, then on ready. And since this on ready, again, returns a promise, we can do again, dot then on ready, dot then on ready, and we can just keep on going and going and going and going and going. So if I just go 
turn this back here. Clear and then run. Run two. So there you go. Every two seconds, it's printing ready to work. So that's the, the first ready to work was this on ready, the second, the third, and then the fourth. So that's a really nice feature. That's a really, really nice feature of promises in, in that you can chain them in a row. And the typical syntax to do this is actually you put the then underneath. So this makes code really easy to read. I think so anyway, it's, it's, it's kind of reading like English. It's then saying on ready and when on ready completes, then call on ready and when that completes, call on ready and when that completes, call on ready. Now note, you're not passing in a function with the brackets. When you add these brackets to a function, what you're really saying is call this function. We don't want to call on ready. We just want to pass it in. We leave it to the promise framework to call the on ready function for us when it's ready. You don't call it with the brackets, okay? So then finally, what do we do with errors? So we could actually have something like a function on error. Here. And then we could just pass that as a second parameter. Okay. So that's one thing that we could do. And then if I was to clear this and just reject, we click run on ready and then ready to work. Okay. And then it gets rejected. So then we print the console error. And so, and actually I didn't put the error in there. So just went wrong. Clear that. Okay. So then you can see basically it calls the first on ready gets called we call ready to work and then we reject it and then once we reject it the on error handler for the first one gets called because we're passing in an error because print something went wrong but then because we've got error handlers on these other ones they get called as well but we have we're not passing anything through them so the kind of the rest of the chain still gets called but the kind of error side of the chain gets called not the success side of the chain. So that's the basics of promises. What I would do if I was you is I would again go to the parse API and just have a look at the promise section and just just have a, a read through this. Promises are really important. As you can see it's got some other functions here as well. So we've got always, as, done, fail, is, then, when. These are useful functions to know um, how they work. But generally, generally, I'd recommend for promises because it's such an important topic, just to read through the API documentation. Just even if you just had a quick scan through it and were just aware of some of the function names when you're reading other people's code, you'll kind of recognize it as a feature of promises rather than perhaps something custom.